In this video, we're going to look at the basic transformations of the function y is equal to sine theta. The first is vertical dilation. In vertical dilation, the graph stretches vertically by a factor of a, and we're looking for equation of the form y is equal to a sine theta. Here are three examples. In the first graph, the black dotted line is the original function y is equal to sine theta. Because we've got a 2 in front of the original function, that essentially multiplies the y coordinate of every single point by 2. So what we see here that's prominent is a change in amplitude from 1 to 2. So for the second example, y is equal to 3 sine theta, you would expect that the y coordinate of every single point gets multiplied by 3, and this changes the amplitude of the graph from 1 to 3. And same goes for the last example, y is equal to half sine theta. The amplitude, which was 1, gets multiplied by half, and so it reduces to a half. The second transformation is horizontal dilation. In horizontal dilation, the graph stretches horizontally by a factor of 1 on b, and the equation will be of the form y is equal to sine b theta. The graph y is equal to sine theta has a period of 360 degrees. This means that it takes 360 degrees for the graph to complete one full revolution before it repeats itself again. With this transformation, the period is going to become 360 degrees divided by b. So here are three examples. In the first graph, the black dotted line is the original function y is equal to sine theta and it has got a period of 360 degrees. By having the number 2 here, the period is going to become 360 divided by 2 which is 180. So we can see that it takes 180 degrees to complete one cycle, 360 degrees to complete two cycles. So within 360 degrees, we can have two complete revolutions. So y is equal to sine 4 theta, the period is going to be given by 360 divided by 4, which is 90 degrees. So one revolution in 90 degrees, two revolutions in 180, three revolutions in 270, and four revolutions in 360. And the last one, y is equal to sine theta on 2. This is the same as y is equal to sine a half theta. So here's the graph of this one. This time the period is going to be given by 360 divided by half, which is 360 times 2 or 720. Another word, it takes 720 degrees to do one revolution. So 360 degrees will only allow it to complete half a revolution. The third transformation is vertical translation. In vertical translation, the graph shifts up or down by c. The equation will be of the form y is equal to sine theta plus c, and this value of c is going to give us the new center line. For example, y is equal to sine theta plus 1. The graph moves up by 1 unit because it's a plus 1, and we now have the center line at y is equal to 1. Our second example, y is equal to sine theta plus 3. The plus 3 means that the graph will move up 3 units, and this time the center line becomes y is equal to 3. When we have y is equal to sine theta minus 2, the minus 2 means that the graph will move down 2 units, and our center line will become y is equal to minus 2. The fourth transformation is horizontal translation. In horizontal translation, the graph shifts left or right by d, and the equation will be of the form y is equal to sine x minus d. Here, the value of d is what we call the phase shift. Here are three examples. For y is equal to sine theta minus 45 degrees, if it's a minus, the graph will shift right by 45 degrees. Y is equal to sine theta minus 90 degrees. Because it's minus again, the graph also shifts right by 90 degrees. We now have y is equal to sine theta plus 60 degrees. This time, because it's a plus, the graph shifts left by 60 degrees. The last two transformations are vertical reflection and horizontal reflection. When we reflect the graph vertically, 
we are flipping the graph about the x-axis and the equation will be of the form y is equal to minus sine theta. So this is what happens. So you've got the points A and B. When we reflect it about the x-axis, A will flip down to the bottom half, A dash, and B will flip up to the top half, B dash. When we reflect it about the y-axis, the equation will be of the form y is equal to sine minus theta. So suppose we've got these points A and B again. This time reflecting about the y-axis means that this will now become A dash and this point will now become B dash. You might say that they look the same and yes they should be the same and this is because sine theta is an odd function and therefore it satisfies this relationship negative sine theta is equal to sine minus theta. In summary, we've covered six different types of transformations for the function y is equal to sine theta and these are vertical dilation, horizontal dilation, vertical translation, horizontal translation, vertical reflection and horizontal reflection. Thanks everyone for watching the video. In our next video, we're going to look at how to combine all these transformations into a single sine graph.